If we're being real, all the Galaxy Note 8 really has to do to be better than the Galaxy Note 7 is to not blow up. Samsung had a little more in mind than that. For them, the Note line has been a place where it gets to push the envelope a little bit, and to see how big a screen it can squeeze into a phone without rendering it inoperable. This year though, the Note 8 feels a little… by the book. It packs all the usual upgrades you'd expect from a new Note, not to mention a dual camera that works very, very well. It might not be the most thrilling update Samsung could have cooked up, but that doesn't take away from how good the Note 8 is. Let's start with the design. At first glance, the Note 8 looks a whole lot like the S8 Plus since their Super AMOLED screens are almost the same size. Where they really differ is the feel. The Note 8 is just a touch bigger in every direction, but it's a little heavier, and the metal frame that runs around the edges is a little more prominent. As a result, the whole thing comes off a little more professional. I'm surprised the Note 8 feels as distinct as it does, honestly. The usual IP68 rating is back too, so the phone will do just fine if you spill some coffee on it, or if you're like me, if you stick the phone directly in the coffee. The screen, by the way, is fantastic. At 6.3 inches, it's the largest Samsung has ever put into a Note, but it doesn't really feel like it. For one, the screen runs at a super long 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio, which means it's a little more than twice as long as it is wide. That makes the Note 8 a very strong choice for people who dig split-screen multitasking, but it also means the screen is narrower than usual. In other words, the Note 8 is a big phone that doesn't necessarily feel like one. More importantly, this Super AMOLED screen is a beauty. Colors are nice and vivid, blacks are deep, and the whole thing is very easily readable under bright sunlight. I wish the Note 8 had a better speaker though. It's loud enough, but most music sounds hollow and kind of unsatisfying. Good thing the Note comes with a solid pair of earbuds. Meanwhile, the software is exactly what you'd expect. Aside from a few extra touches, it's a dead ringer for the customized version of Android 7.1 you'll find on the Galaxy S8s. Thankfully, Samsung's interface feels much more fluid and mature this year, and even with all of the company's extra add-ons, I still prefer it over the custom UIs used by other phone makers. It's full of neat touches too. Long pressing an app, for example, presents a pop-up menu where you can disable or uninstall the app without a trip into the settings. The Edge UX is back too, offering you quick access to your favorite apps and contacts. It's a nice touch, but I often forget that little menu's even there. New to the mix this time is what Samsung calls App Pairs. You can link two of these apps to launch in a split-screen mode at the same time. That's another thoughtful addition, but it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. And then there's Bixby, which, for better or worse, works about as well as it did on the Galaxy S8s. Long story short, Bixby was designed to perform more in-depth tasks than your usual assistant. So conversational commands like show me my photos from Brooklyn work fine, but so do more complex requests like open YouTube and show me my subscriptions. I've heard of a lot of people having issues with Bixby understanding them, but that's never really been my experience. That said, Bixby's limited ability to work with third-party apps can be tough to swallow, and Bixby on the Note 8 seems more prone to misinterpreting the high Bixby wake-up command than the S8s were. I'm told this should get better over time, but until then it has been seriously obnoxious. With a Snapdragon 835 chipset and 6GB of RAM, you'd expect the Note 8 to run like a charm, and you'd be right. Performance was rock solid throughout my week of testing, and I didn't notice any hiccups while multitasking or playing visually intense games. That said, I was sort of hoping the extra 2GB of RAM would make for a more noticeable gain in speed, but it really hasn't. If you've used a Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus this year, you know exactly the level of performance to expect. Battery life was also in line with the S8 Plus. If you only pick up a Note 8 when you need it, you can expect the thing to last between a day and a half to two full days. On days when I've been on the phone nonstop though, it's run for a full day and it would have a little extra juice left in the tank early next morning. Ultimately, whether the Note 8 is worth splurging on depends on how you feel about two things, the S Pen and the new dual camera. The S Pen hasn't changed much since last year. It's still IP68 water resistant, and together with the Note itself, it supports 4,096 levels of pressure. The nib is the same 0.7 millimeters as it was last year too, but that's sort of the sweet spot. Writing on the Note 8's massive screen is really pleasant, even if it doesn't feel quite as good as a pen on paper. The real differences lay in the software. 
You can now write up to 100 pages as a memo while the screen is off, though I'd seriously doubt you'd ever need to. Translating text with the S Pen is much better than before too, since you can now translate whole sentences and passages instead of just single words. The results are straight out of Google Translate, so you'll often end up with technically correct, but sometimes grammatically odd snippets of text. Live message, meanwhile, is awesome. Long story short, you can doodle animated messages, lay them on top of photos, and save them as GIFs you can blast out to friends. Is it a game changer? Absolutely not, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. And now we've come to Samsung's first dual camera, which combines a 12 megapixel telephoto sensor with another 12 megapixel sensor for wide angle shooting. In a word, this camera is excellent. Samsung has designed these two sensors to work in tandem, so unlike devices like the V30, there's no quick toggle between wide angle and telephoto shooting. Instead, you'll wind up using one of the cameras instead of the other, depending on how closely you're zoomed into your subject. In our test photos, colors were crisp and lively across the board, and just about all of those test shots came through with a remarkable level of detail. Since both of those sensors pack optical image stabilization, the Note 8 has also been a rock solid performer in low light. Having two cameras also means we can add some background blur to photos in the new live focus mode. Thankfully, unlike other dual cameras with this feature, I can control how much blur I want in my shot before and after I've taken the photo. The feature sometimes has a little trouble picking up every edge of the subject in front of it, but in general, it's been very good at separating the foreground from the background. Honestly, my only real gripes have to do with the camera interface instead of the cameras themselves. Let's say you're trying to zoom in on a subject. You can tap a button to switch between 1x and 2x zoom, but it disappears after you tap on the screen to lock focus and exposure. Sure, you can still pinch to zoom in and out, but it would just be nice if that zoom button stayed in place. You can also get the phone to take photos using both cameras at once, but you can only do it in live focus mode, and there's no way to set the phone to save both photos to the gallery at once. Why? I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. So yeah, the camera app could use a little cleaning up. Until Google's new Pixel show up though, I'm pretty comfortable calling the Note 8 my go-to mobile camera. All told, the Galaxy Note 8 is one of Samsung's best ever smartphones, and if you're intrigued by the idea of doodling on screen with an excellent little pen, you just won't do any better. Sure, it's a niche phone, that doesn't mean it's not great. The thing is, camera aside, the Note 8 isn't a huge leap forward from the Galaxy S8 Plus. While the Note 8 might be Samsung's best big phone, it's still just not going to be worth it for some people.